Now, travel bubble, since we're talking about it, travel restrictions. How do you plan something around something that's so fluid, particularly as a business that is so dependent, frankly, on, on travel? Our team, you know, given the pandemic, has been very agile. And we have always built in plans and strategy in place mm. that's always ready to go mm. anytime whether there's a change in you know, travel restrictions and where the travel bubble is forming. So, uh, so overall, I do see travel bubble is an important part of the recovery uh, post-pandemic. And if you see China, for example, it's a travel bubble of its own. Um, and because of that, you know, um, uh, you know, our, our, hosp uh, you know, our hotel business is faring really well. And you look at the U.S. and Mexico, that's a travel bubble. I look at Europe, for example, U.K. to the rest of Europe will become a travel bubble probably in, in, part of, uh, in, in summer. Okay. Um, so uh, because we, we try to do, we try to best estimate uh, where the travel bubbles will be, mm -hmm. and then we plan ourselves a marketing strategy uh, towards that. The key is to really understand the feeder market. You know, where would be your imminent feeder market and really have plans already in place to activate any time that, uh, uh, that it's, it's, it's ready. Some of the hotel executives that we've spoken to, some have assumptions, some don't have assumptions on when travel demand, global travel demand actually recovers fully. Do you have an assumption yourself? I think that for the rest of the year, it will be uh, mostly within travel bubbles. Um, and I think that we're cautiously, cautiously optimistic that uh, by 2022, uh, next year, we should be resuming global travel. On vaccines, do you have a corporate policy? Uh, we uh, encourage our uh, employees to make their own decisions. Okay. Uh, vaccination, to me, does play a very key role to uh, resolving the situation and uh, getting us, us out of the pandemic. Uh, but I guess vaccination is not the only thing. I think we continue to be very uh, vigilant in terms of our uh, health and safety protocol, our personal hygiene, uh, and, and really stay vigilant in terms of uh, our uh, hotel standards. What I'm curious is, in terms of long-term strategy, there are not a lot of rosewood properties in the world. Obviously, you take things very meticulously and carefully when you plan new, new properties. Do you have a specific, not a specific, do you have a rough number in mind say in five years time, how many Rosewood properties you would like? Or is that, is, do you take things really step by step? We take things step by step because we are a brand that uh, is, Rosewood as a brand uh, mm. is a collection. So we are not a, a chain hotel where it's about the number of hotels. It's more about uh, really uh, selecting the right location, building really quality properties, building properties that really celebrate the sense of place and building landmark uh, uh, locations that will uh, deliver amazing experiences for our customers. And in terms of roughly what criteria do you use, if you have at all any criteria? When you go about picking a city or a location, what needs to be in that city or location? for it to fit maybe a long-term plan of where you want to put up a Rosewood property? So we look at feeder market, whether okay. our customers uh, 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 would either be in that market or would love to go to that market. Uh, we would look at whether it's uh, key cities around the world, key global cities, uh, those would be uh, expected. And then we would look at locations that are a little bit more undiscovered, mm. uh, a little bit more adventurous, uh, could be, uh, you know, uh, um, less uh, accessible, let's say, and uh, less expected. So for example, we, we, uh, we actually reached a milestone this, this, uh, this year and finally entered into Japan. Mm. Uh, with our uh, first property there uh, in Okinawa, in Miyakujima. And, and, and that, that island is beautiful. It's mm. off Okinawa. You fly into Okinawa, take a, uh, a, a, a plane over a you know, very short ride to the island. So these are locations where our clients and our cu customers are, 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 would love to explore. Do you have a preference in mind, or are you noticing a trend where you are seeing more growth? Say, is it in Europe? Is it in North America? Is it Asia? Because in five years' time, is there a place in the world, in your view, that eventually makes up not the bulk, but maybe the majority? So of, in, of the, your in the last couple of years, we've seen a significant ramp up in Asia and Europe. Okay. Um, and our pipeline growth, uh, uh, you know, last year in terms of signing, are very concentrated in Europe. So mm. we've announced Rose at Rome. We are now we're opening Villa Magna in uh, Madrid this year. Uh, we announced Rose at Amsterdam, for example. China is also a big focus for us. Um, in entering into not only the first tier cities but the second tier cities as well. We announced uh, this week uh, uh, Rosewood Hangzhou, for example. So the China strategy uh, continues, it's a, it's a big 
focus for us. Um, in the U.S., uh, you know, we are uh, entering, uh, we, we just announced Mexico City, for example, uh, as well as we're opening St. Bart's and Caribbean. Mm -hmm. uh, South America is a, is, is a focus. We're opening Sao Paulo very soon in, a, in about nine months' time. Um, so we still have a lot of markets that we, uh, we need to be in and we are venturing in. So it's a really exciting time for Rosewood. And as I mentioned, Japan was a, was a big win for mm -hmm. us uh, uh, going into Mi uh, Okinawa, Miyakojima. We also just signed a new world hotel in Niseko as well. So that's a really uh, uh, big win for us.